January was we had 100 people that played um, two parts of a puzzle game. And I've got a couple pieces of uh, puzzles that I brought. They're uh, currency. The, the theme was steampunk. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. It, so, it's good. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, these are some of the... You do like steampunk or you don't? Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. So you'll enjoy these. Oh, they're coming in backwards. But uh, yeah, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a noob. <laughs> Uh, this is actually the final one, and it has a um, hidden puzzle on it, and I can show you that on this one. This links to our next game. Right there, and um, it's in sign language, so you have to decipher uh, where to go next. And um, yeah, so we had a lot of fun creating these. You know, there's many more. This is a particular, particularly nice one, steampunk theme. And so, um, one more. You can see the denominations are strange numbers. So can you tell me a little bit more about exactly how the game works? How do people participate? Everything like sure. that? Yeah. So uh, the game was basically, um, we, we were uh, tasked to do this game for a convention. And what we wanted to do was we looked into the steampunk community. We found out that they're meticulous crafters. They like ornate memorabilia. So we uh, did a lot of research on design, and, and particularly in the Queen Mary's rich. So it was just a perfect background. Um, and what we did, it was an invite only. Um, so there were, I think there were like five or 600 people here, and only 100 of them got to play. And, and they had little badges on them. So uh, 50 people got white badges, and 50 people got blue badges. And um, they had to find each other during the convention. It was really neat. Um, so you never knew like who could help you with the other half of the puzzle. And so um, the other half of the puzzle was a postcard. And basically what you did was we gave them a packet of uh, four envelopes. Each team got four envelopes. They told the story of a, of a romance from one side of the Atlantic to the other. Okay, and then the other team was going from this way to that way. And they crossed in the middle. And you had to find out the clues. You had to meet somebody from the other team to find out the, the extra clues which would point you to an address where you would send this postcard. Gotcha. And uh, I have the prize pack that we just mailed out, actually. Right here. Which is the uh, final bill, five, uh, you know, five of the bills. And then on the right, you can see the, uh, the medallion, which is... Uh, Turned out really good. My, my business partner is a master crafter, and he, he really put a lot of effort into that. So, so we're excited to hear the feedback from it. So, so I guess uh, the biggest question is why? Why do you do it? Well, um, it's one of those passion things. You know, I love secret stuff, and I love to get secret stuff. And somebody handed me a book about a year ago that kind of got me into this world. And uh, so then I was like, I was all hyped up about it. So I, I did a, um, an event at the Comic-Con just like just random on the street but we got some big players to to come in and, and play it and everything so uh, it worked out great we got our appetite wet for more and we secured a, a berth on the Queen Mary and it's just off to the races from there because this place is amazing there's like seven yeah. years of history here it's awesome yeah um so before we get into what your talk was about do you guys have questions right now or it looks like we have notifications any questions all right um yeah, I want to. I want to play. If you guys want to send an email, I can uh, put you onto our queue list, and you'll find out our next event is in June in Costa Mesa. Um, be sure to throw your emails in the chat, guys. Um. Oh, and we got um, we got our um, somebody contacted us from England, and they want to put our game in a uh, steampunk anthology. So, uh, so that's coming out in, um, I think, in about six months. Nice. Yeah, it was totally random because <laughs> I, I, I don't know who they are. So your talk that you gave today, yeah. uh, did you approach any sort of like the psychology of how this works um, or the impact of it on like development? Yeah, I think I did talk a little bit about development. And I think that the main thing that we were doing, which is almost opposed to what most people, different than most people are doing here, is the digital thing. So most people are all about like, I've got this cool gadget, you can attach it to your body and it'll do something that you've never done before. Right. And so we were, we were the opposite of that. We were like, 
we know what it's like. We know when technology breaks down that you have no game, right? And at the Comic Con, that happened to a lot of other people. And so, especially in this ship with all the very thick steel and rivets, like you can't trust Wi-Fi to work anymore. Right? We don't have. There's any, no Wi-Fi. We have no access down here. So, um, so we just did it straight up. You know, physical interactions. We wanted visceral, tangible items. That's why I made these bills. They're they're on very thick paper. That it's it's rag paper, so it feels like an actual currency. And, it is um, really nice. And, and it was all about the, the feeling that you had. And then the second most important thing was meeting other people. Because I know that when I go to a convention, you know, I might have a friend or two, but I'm not extremely outgoing. So if I had an, a helpful uh, tool with me to, to talk to somebody else, it would be an enabler. So, right. so we did this for them, and people loved it. They were like, I'm so glad. Like, not only did I meet other people, but I learned a lot about the Queen Mary, too. So it was just, you know, all of our pieces worked out really well. We got a lot of really good feedback from people. Um, do you guys actually, because um, I, I don't want to hog or share anything about mine, but do you guys kind of feel the same way? I mean, Cliff, you were at the NYC Hurl. Um, so a Hurl is a hangout in real life. And lots and lots and lots of us on Google Plus have met up um, because of the technology that we have here. And then we decided to meet in real life. So Cliff, can you talk a little bit about um, how like there's value added when we meet in real life and whether or not that's true? Okay. Go for it. We actually have. We're trying to. That's part of the reason I came here to speak because uh, I wanted to see if there was anybody who was interested in something like that. Do you know anyone like that? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So if you if you put your email on there, I'll definitely uh, contact you. I'd love to love to get that information. Okay, I've got you, perfect. Cliff. That's um, great. All right, so I guess what is your final 20-second thought that you want to leave us all with? I would say come to the Queen Mary. If you haven't been here, it is really sort of a piece of history that we don't have anymore. Like, when we did all this research on it, it was this luxury cruise liner that you could take from exotic ports from here to there, and, and airplane travel has kind of taken that away. And it's just a, it's, it's like a living museum. You can walk around and you can touch things, and absolutely come here and experience it it's true it's um, honestly it's awesome um so thank you mike um thank, thank you. you guys we'll be back to do another hangout um here in always um and mike we say goodbye by hugging all right all right. <laughs> all right thanks guys and we'll see you again soon from bill